Hello everyone and welcome back to Armstrong's Laboratory, the channel that breaks down academic papers so they are more easily understood by everyone. In this video, we are looking at the paper Evidence to Reduce Acme Teen Concentrations in the Cerebral Cortex of Suicides. This paper looks at the polyamine system in suicide victims. To fully understand this paper, you need to have an understanding of polyamines. Polyamines are small polycations that interact with negatively charged molecules such as DNA, RNA, and proteins. Polyamines include molecules such as agmatine, fetrosine, and spermine. These molecules play essential roles in cell proliferation, signaling, apoptosis, immunity, neurotransmission, adult brain neurogenesis, and stress regulation. Polyamines are synthesized in neurons, stored in astrocytes and synaptic vesicles, and are released through NMDA and AMPA receptors. NMDA and AMPA receptors are amotropic receptors that allow for the passage of positively charged ions in the cells. I'll be making a more in-depth video about these receptors at a later date. In psychiatric illnesses such as schizophrenia, mood disorders, stress and anxiety, addiction, and suicidal behavior, there are alterations in both the expression of polyamines and the enzymes that can synthesize them. Multiple studies have revealed that there is a dysregulation of the polyamine system from individuals who have suffered from major depressive disorder and committed suicide. Specifically, researchers showed a downregulation of the polyamine spermidine N1 acetyltransferase, or SAT1 for short. SAT1 is responsible for adding acetyl groups to molecules and is the rate limiting enzyme in polyamine catabolism. Catabolism refers to the breakdown of molecules into smaller molecules, while the rate limiting step is the slowest step in the metabolic pathway and determines the overall rate of all the other reactions happening in that pathway. The polyamine system is a potential target for the treatment of depression. Preclinical data suggests that the polyamine agmatine may act as an antidepressant. This effect was initially seen in mice who underwent four swim tests and a tail suspension test, which are tests for depression in mice. Researchers have investigated the potential mechanism by which agmatine acts as an antidepressant. One hypothesized mechanism includes the blockage of NMDA receptors, which may prevent NMDA-induced cytotoxicity, a mechanism similar to ketamine. I'll be doing a separate video on ketamine at a later date. Proposed mechanisms also include agmatine interactions with serotonin receptors 5-HT, 5-HT2, the mu opioid receptor, alpha-2 receptors, and the monoemergic system, and a variety of other other factors. If I took the time to explain what all of these were, we'd be here a little bit too long. Now, we see all these potential mechanisms, you know, and this is just one of those situations in science where we really don't know what's going on. It may be a while before scientists can put all the pieces of the puzzle together to figure out the mechanism. Regardless, we just need to know that it's been shown countless times that agmatine is an effective antidepressant. So while agmatine has been looked at extensively in major depressive disorder, no one has taken a look at agmatine concentrations in postmortem brains of suicide victims. To look at agmatine concentrations, these researchers use a method known as negative ion chemical ionization, GCMS. Now, despite the fact that this method gave me horrific flashbacks to my organic chemistry class, I was able to find a resource that adequately described the technique in more detail. If you're feeling like learning more about that technique, go ahead and click the link in the description below. If not, just know that this is a method uh, to quantify the amount of agmatine in postmortem brains. The study contained similar groups to the last video I posted. They had a control group who had no psychiatric disorders and did not die by suicide, a group who suffered from major depressive disorder and died by suicide, and a group who did not suffer from major depressive disorder and died by suicide. It's important to note that all the samples in this cohort came from male brains. This was done to avoid any sex-related differences in the polyamine system. From these brains, the researchers looked at the agmatine concentrations in the motor cortex, orbital cortex, and the prefrontal cortex. The results showed some interesting data. In the motor cortex, the concentrations of agmatine was lower in both the major depressive disorder suicide group and the non-major depressive disorder suicide group. The concentrations between these two groups were similar when comparing them to one another. We see a similar trend when observing the orbital cortex as the agmatine levels in the major depressive disorder suicide and the non-major depressive suicide group have decreased concentrations of agmatine. And again, this trend is observed in the prefrontal cortex of suicide victims, regardless of psychiatric disorder. Interestingly, we see that the concentrations of agmatine do not really differ between all three brain regions. So no one brain region had any significantly less agmatine than the other. This data lines up with other previous studies that looked at agmatine concentrations. 
Agmentine is decreased in concentrations in the motor cortex, the orbital cortex, and the prefrontal cortex. Now let's take a moment and discuss what agmentine is doing. Agmentine is broken down through an enzyme known as agmatinase, which is responsible for hydrolyzation of molecules or breakdown due to interactions with water. This breakdown results in the polymine uh, petrocene. In the brains of suicide victims, there is an increased concentration of petrocene. This may be due to the overactivity of agmatinase, which may explain the decrease in agmatine. Evidence suggests that agmatine suppresses the activity of orthanine decarboxylase. Orthanine decarboxylase is an enzyme that is responsible for converting orthanine to petrocene. Less agmatine may result in less suppression of orthanine decarboxylase, and therefore explain this increased petrocene. Another potential explanation of increased petrocene is the increased expression of orthanine decarboxylase anti-enzyme 1 and 2, which are also responsible for inhibiting orthanine decarboxylase activity. The translation of orthanine decarboxylase anti-enzyme 1 and 2 are directly impacted by increased polyamine levels, such as petrocene and lower agmatine. The big takeaway from the study are this. The polyamine system is a potential endogenous antidepressant system. The polyamine agmatine is decreased in the motor cortex, orbital cortex, and the prefrontal cortex in the postmortem brains of suicide victims. Decreased agmatine may be responsible for an increase in the concentration of petrocene and may be accomplished through agmatinase, orthanine decarboxylase, and or OAZ1 and 2. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you learned something. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel down below. I post videos weekly that go over different academic papers, so be on the lookout for future content. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them a comment down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. If you're looking for more information surrounding this topic, be sure to check out my other videos.